Okay, so we are back. I think everybody's back. Um, I hope you are not getting bored yet. <laughs> it was sometimes like that, but just be following. Uh, I know it's uh, we are a bit slow, but uh, I think it's okay for a start. Okay, so um, I might decide to do results. Let's say the result should be an integer. And assign it to this. And before I call multiplication, I can print out the result. So but I can make it a little bit interactive and saying by typing uh, the result of I print it out here. This one will be print line. I just print results. Okay, so let's have a separation so that we can see what it means. So before we begin, I want to say the result of this is this. Okay, so I would repeat this guy after each one. So the results of subtraction. In the same results. I'm expecting a question. There's something I missed out deliberately, but I'm expecting that somebody would notice and uh, probably give his uh, his uh, opinion. So let's run this and see if we have uh... So what I've done is, let me explain. I just want the system to print this out and say the result of this. And in front of it, let it put the answer, which is this calling of this method. We all remember where we wrote the method here. So it's going to come inside there and perform A plus B and return the answer back to results. And once you return it back to result, remember result is a variable. That result is just the name of the memory location. So we can change the content every time. Whatever we are storing inside is depending on us right now. So remember when I talked about changing of values for primitive types. Okay, so it will store it here and uh, it will be printed in front of this guy. And on the next line, we should have this and so on and so forth. Then when everything is done, it should tell me completed. So let's see. Can we see the output? Yes. Yeah. So you can also run this on your web. Should get the same results. Oh, this is trying to let me see it. 
Something is missing. Okay, system, cut out system. Yeah. I don't find simple results. Oh, 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 sorry. I didn't copy everything. I'm supposed to copy this guy's thing. So show you. Don't forget the full column. The column. This column. What? Uh, which which one? Let's see. And uh, okay, what 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 did I miss? I let me copy it. Oh, okay, okay, okay. We need to copy. <laughs> we need to copy all these uh, functions. I'm so used to IntelliJ. Sorry. Copy all of these functions, so they will be here. Yeah. At least it can find the function now. Okay, so now um, I have a question for someone. What is this called? This int a and int b, or this a and b in this place? What is it called? Who knows? Nobody. Okay, have you ever heard of parameters and uh, arguments before? I know there are I know there are variables, but let let's Google the difference. Uh, there are variables, but in this time they call one parameters and they call one argument. Have you ever heard, uh, heard that before? Yes, I've heard of argument and parameters. Yes. So what's the difference between them? Well, and how uh, do you know which one? Because uh, let me explain. Uh, okay, I was also explaining with the web. Okay, now, when I'm passing, look at add now. I said add, this add itself, it's a function down here, right? I'm passing two parameters to it, okay? They call, what I'm passing here is called parameters. When it gets in here, it's called argument. Now, I used to miss it for each other. So is either it is called argument when it gets in here, and it's called parameter when it's here. So that's the difference between the two. Is that the same difference you know, Victor? Okay, so let's see the difference. So a parameter is a variable in the declaration of a function. Okay, an argument is the actual value of this variable that gets passed to the function. Okay, so this is uh, exactly what they have defined for us. So they said that a what the parameter is a variable in the declaration, okay, and the argument is the actual value of this variable that is passed. So what that means is that this is a parameters. These are parameters, right? And what we are passing is the argument according to the definition here okay so i don't want to get you confused okay but um when we are talking about methods and functions i told you that the difference between a method and a function is that a method is a function called within a class so this as it is now is a function if we are just using it on its own well because we are calling it in the class main here or in the class uh what's the name of this class here calculate okay then it automatically becomes a method so now methods can either be they don't accept any parameters or they accept parameters parameters are something you pass into the method just like you are passing int a and int b into the method okay so that i can use it for something but when i'm now calling the method I'm passing what those parameter values should be. We don't call those things anymore at that outside, like in this place. We don't call it parameters anymore. Here we call it arguments. You may not need it for now, but it's always good. I used to get it confused with each other, arguments and parameters. So, but there's a difference, and that's what we've seen in Google. You can check for that. Okay, so now 
why do we why did we use uh, a function or a method? Why did we use a method to achieve this task? Why can't we just say uh, here we just add a plus b together instead of calling different uh, methods? Then someone that said that this is a variable, you are also right because we are just giving it an English name of parameter and argument. But in the real sense of it, it's a named memory location in the memory where the value will be stored. But uh, professionally and uh, for people to know that you're a programmer, you don't say it's a variable when you are using it this way anymore. Okay? So you just say it's uh, what? It's a parameters. And here you say these are arguments. But here, you can call it a variable, this one. Do you understand? So we should know the difference. Okay, so we have yes. been able to see how we, is there any question? Are we clear with what I've done, all these things I added? Are we clear? Yes, we are clear. I just want to uh, ask a question here. There's something, something we've missed out on our code. Okay. Apart okay. from the first one where we do, we're saying the result is to, we needed to have said result equal to multiply, result equal to divide, so that we get different numbers instead of the result being one or five all through. If you notice. Oh, okay. I, I didn't, <laughs> I did not even check what is going on. Okay, okay. I didn't check what is going on. Thank you very much. You know, I said there's an error or there's something I'm missing out. And you I was expecting somebody to remind me, but I forgot along the line while talking about parameters and variables. So you can see that. Thank you very much. It takes a programmer to understand this. So at this line, I did this. I assigned the result because that's why I declared the variable result. I assigned the, whatever is coming out from here to this. Okay. So two things. This is one. The other thing is, I was expecting somebody to tell me or to say he or she doesn't understand what is going on here. Okay, but it's like all of us will understand it, so there's no need to explain it. So, when you pass, for example, 45 and 60, so this first number will be 45, this second number will be 60. So, it comes in form of A and B as parameters, right? So we take the parameters and we use them to perform an operation using an operator called addition, right? So this thing add A and B together and the result will be returned because we are having a return type integer. So if I'm having a return type, maybe uh, floats now, that would be another thing. But I'm having a return type of integer, so that is good. So it will return an integer for me and not a float. And the value is returning, I would now accept it inside the variable result that I have created. So I need to do this one. Now, after accepting it, I want to print out the result. And that is what led to the first one, okay, which is correct. But when I go to the second guy, I called the uh, method, but I did not assign the results to anything. Whereas, remember, a re this result is a variable. It's just a memory location where value is stored. The last value we stored inside is 105. And so because I did not change the value, every time I'm seeing results, results, I'm just seeing 105 because that is what is still inside. Nothing has changed. So I need to repeat this uh, part here, here, and here. Okay. So, and I can, sorry, I was trying to see because I thought I was intelligent. And I can run it again. So there should be, yes, I was expecting zero here because you want to divide 45 by what? 60, which should be the visual. Okay. I want to divide 45 by 60. What do you expect to get? It's supposed to get a fraction. Yes. A decimal. Yes. But because what are we returning? An integer. So we can't get that. So let's try and change it to floats and see what happens. But remember, your result is what? What's your result? It's an, in, it's an yeah. integer. So you still get a zero because so we need to you, do, do you understand? So we have to change what our results will be too. Okay. 
So let's change our result to float. So that means this 105 will now be 105.0. All the other things will be 105.0, blah, 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 if it doesn't throw an error that we have not seen yet. Can we see now? Now it's showing 105.0. It's turning every other thing to float because the result is float. But this guy is still giving us 0, 0.0. So let's try and see whether increasing the, the uh, what's it called? The uh, precision will give us anything. Uh, uh, um, I don't want to change this. Let, let's let's okay. let's do this. Let's, uh, let's, sorry. let's do this. Uh, let's. Okay, and when we want to call it for division, we cast it. We cast uh, it. Remember when I talked about type casting? Yes. Let's cast it to float. See what uh, the results will give us. Okay, so there are integers, but when it's going in, because the vision is accepting floats, floats, and we want it to return floats. So let's see what the results will give. Okay, so we quickly, now we are getting the right results. So these are the little, little things we need to understand when we are writing programming, uh, because uh, little uh, change of data type can give you a wrong result, okay? So we are expecting uh, a float, but because we're not passing floats into the variable or into the method, we're not getting the right answer, but now it's giving us something that looks good. So I'm going to end this one here now. We have, um, should we uh, complete this? Uh, we have uh, less than 25 minutes. Should we complete this 25 minutes and continue? Are we, are we tired? We complete, sir. You are, you are doing well, sir. So then let's go on. Let's continue with this slide because I'm, I've been digressing a lot. So the next one is. Um, Conditional logic, yeah, we are done with this. So we're going to talk about conditions. When do you branch, when do you loop? We talk about arrays, we talk about the for each loop, and we talk about the switch loop. So uh, I'm sure we're not going to finish this, but uh, let's just uh, go into that. Another thing which uh, I don't think you use quite often is, remember we, we assigned this value, okay? But instead, you can decide to uh, accept the value. Allow input. What did you say? No, no, just, sorry. I was just saying allow input from. Yes, input. allow input. Yes, yes. You can decide to allow input. And there are various ways by which you can uh, allow input into your, uh, what's it called? Into your application. I think I documented it somewhere. But uh, when you become advanced, you start doing your web and your frameworks in Java, maybe in Spring Boot and the rest, you don't need to be <laughs> to even remember all these things. Okay, see this kind of now. Immediately I typed it. Can you see that it uh, did something for me? Important. Yes, it imported it automatically by itself. So I don't need to uh, be stressing myself, okay? So, uh, but scanner is not the only way you can use to uh, get, uh, what's it called? To get value into your system. There are other ways. I think I, I put it in the slide. So I can just copy a function and we can use it. New input dot, dot, uh, uh, what is it called? Next, int. yes, let's say I want to accept uh, integer. Then I can uh, let me um, do this. 
can comment it. That's what I want to comment it. Mm -hmm. And I say first number is equal to this. So I can get the next one too. The second number is equal to this. Okay. But uh, I always like interactive uh, applications. So uh, instead of doing that, let's say we have a print line that says uh, just there's no respect for enter the first number. Okay. And after we do that, we accept it. And the next one says enter the second number. Uh, the results that we did on that other page we've not done it yet, so let me quickly put it. And also, our float, let me copy new float. This float. And the uh, result is also float. So let's run this and see the server. Second number. Anything wrong with this uh, input starts? Can I enter the first number? I'll enter 45. Then enter the second number. I enter 60. Okay, so we still have our same results. So this is a little bit interactive now because now we are communicating with the system so the system is also communicating with us but we have also achieved the same thing i can move this exactly to to the web uh, i'm not sharing my full screen am i i think i need so let me move it to the web so we can all see Also. Okay, uh, while we wait for the results, let's move on to what the slide has to say. Yes, conditional logic. Why do we need conditional logic? And what are the types of conditional logic we have or we need? Okay, I think this has one error like that scanner. Okay, let's copy the import. Maybe that's what he's looking for. They are now import here. I don't, we, we, should, we should go ahead. Uh, since it's working already, I know it's work. So uh, that's not a problem. So for relational uh, conditional logic, you know, sometimes when you need to make a decision and say, if this is this, then do this. If I, uh, I, I want to learn programming, then I start with web technologies or I go into backend technologies and all that. So decision making is very important in programming. And so also, when you are, uh, you are solving a problem, you need to be able to tell uh, the system or the computer that if you encounter this type of problem, solve it this way. If you encounter this other type of problem, solve it the other way. So these are the reasons why we need conditional logic in our code. And the most important one or the most, uh, I said important, most common one is your if-then statement. So, but the structure and the way we write it in Java might be different from the way they write it in other programming language. But there will always be a conditional statement. So that's why I said, once you know the syntax, now that you know the different syntax 
in Java. You also learn the same different syntax in Python. Then you start comparing and say, oh, I think it's easier to, to do this like this in Python than in Java. And begin to see comparison. So this is what uh, makes most of all this uh, programming easier for somebody that already know a programming language. So it's easier for you to start and pick up another one. Okay, so uh, we have relational operators. We start with that, talking about your greater than, less than, your equals to, or greater than or equals to, your main equals to, and the rest of them. So uh, also there's something I forgot to mention. Remember we'll be using result equals to this, result equals to that, since. So this is not an equal to, uh, operator they call it an assignment operator assignment operator in the sense that you are assigning what is on the right side to what is on the left side okay whatever the result of what you have on the right side you're assigning it to the left side at least whatever result here you're assigning to this it doesn't mean that this one is equal to this no in java if you want to use equals to you use double uh assignment operator like that that's when you cannot say if this is equal to this then do this okay so that's one of the things that the uh, document is talking about and uh, not equals to use your exclamation mark to be uh, assignment operator so let's just go on these are just simple simple things we can try out ourselves to save our time so conditional assignment Okay, this is very key. Can I just, can I just, uh, oh, this is working on 65. Great. So it needed me to import scanner. That's good. Okay, so um, can I just save this one so that we can do another, uh, it's another, so this is our calculator, our calculator is done. But we want to learn other things. So I'll move all this into another method. A, a private static void. Does anybody know how to uh, create a, a constant? What is a constant? Have we heard about a constant before in Java? Very good. Nobody. Mathematics, yes. I spend constant. Move all these codes. The system is saying I need to shut down now. Put in here. Okay. So I'll just call this guy. You see how I created, uh, I created this method. It's accepting no par parameter and you're passing no argument into it. But when you go inside it, you can see it's doing a lot of things. So I can just call only the name here. And this make my code clean, okay? So it's very important to write clean code. So if anybody's going through your code and see this, then they can go inside and check out what is happening. But meanwhile, I can just run it and it should still be doing exactly the same thing it was doing before. 45, 45, 60. We still get the same value. Okay, so now since we have this and I'm not going to need it again, I'll just comment it out. But it's there. I've saved my code. Okay, so we were talking about, let's say I decide to say int a equals to 10. B equals to five. A conditional statement can say if A is less than five, we have 10 minutes more. I think um, immediately after this timeout, we'll end the class. So uh, we'll continue on Monday with uh, the main instructor. I hope he'll be around by then. So uh, if A is less than five, do this. If not, do that. Okay, I can say system dot, let's just print something. If A is less than five, print. That's why I like uh, copy and paste. 
prints. What am I doing? Sorry. What I wanted to do is if A is less than is less than B. That's what I wanted to do. So sorry. A print A is less than B. Okay. Print A is less than B. Okay. Else. I will explain this because uh, the slide uh, really talked about this, but I just want to quickly use the condition else. Print something else. A is less than B or it's not or whatever. Or let's just do this. It's not less than B. Okay, so now I have this condition. What is A? For my calculation, is A less than B? From what we are just saying, no, no, okay. So definitely, what part of what condition part of my statement will be executed? This the second one, sir. Okay, so let's see it. We really want to see it, so that I will use it to explain what this conditional statement is all about. Let's see the results. Okay, now instead of doing this, I can say this is a conditional statement. Say. Uh, a, uh, how do I put it? A less than B. Mm -hmm. Question mark. And I say, do this part. Else, do this part. And I end it. So let's put this in brackets and see how it's done. So now, look at this statement. Look at this structure. The conditional statement checks a condition. I know it's throwing error because this is not the syntax, but I want to use it to explain. And then it has something that is checking if this is this. If it is true, if the result of this is true, perform what you have here. I can have print system dot out if it is true. Instead of having this, you have this here. And if it is false, do this other one. Okay, so now, so now the, 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 the other part, I'll get it from the slide here. That's not, but what I'm trying to say is that there's a conditional statement that can help you to minimize everything you've written here if A is less than B. And you just use a single line to check. Whereas uh, you separate it with this, uh, what's it called? The column. And the column, what the column is doing is that it's just telling you that this part should be executed if this result is true. And if the result is false, execute this part. So that's what conditional statement is talking about, right? So you can see the way they, do, they did it here. They initialized Vmax, right? as a variable, pending that whatever result that comes out from these two, then store, if this uh, V1 is greater than V2, store V1 into Vmax. Else, store V2 into what? Vmax. So from this calculation, they said V1 is seven, while V2 is five. And we can see that V1 is definitely greater than V2. So what will be stored? Seven. That's the output here, right? And also in this one too, they did the same whatever. They are assigning this and say, room, if this guy, if room equals to, yes, this double quotation, this double assignment means equals to, if rooms, which is four, equals to zero, pass this guy. If not, perform this division, okay? So that is how to use, uh, what's it called now? A conditional statement. It's as simple as that. But if you don't know how to use it, just I beg you, just use this because they are doing the same thing. But this one just gives you more flexibility and shows how professional you are in programming, really. And it saves a lot of time typing, uh, going back and forth, and all that. So that is exactly what it is. But you can perform any of your statements inside here the way it is, right? All right, so that is, 
that is that. Uh, the next one talks about. Sorry, sorry, sir. Just, just. Let's to, go back. Yeah. Um, with the if else statements, you can have maybe three, four, five conditions, or more than two conditions. Can you yes. do the same with the conditional statement? Yes. Um, we have not gotten to other places because in like this, I can have. Do you mean I can have like um, saying mm -hmm. and, or what do you mean? I mean, like you can have a. a you can have else of, if yes. and put another condition. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, you can do that. We've not gotten there. I'm trying okay. to follow the slide. Sorry, sorry, sir. Sorry. Sir. <laughs> no problem. No problem. So it's because uh, I, the way the slide is, that's why I'm just trying to use it to explain. Mm -hmm. Because I know if I explain this to you without doing this, yes. it might be confusing because most people mm -hmm. understand this. Yes, and sir. this might not be uh, easily cool. understood. Mm -hmm. So, you, uh, so the if condition, if statement is just what I quickly explained. Let's uh, have this screen. I think I've jumped before my time. So we have less than three minutes. In in case this meeting goes off, that will be the end for today. So we'll continue on Monday. Uh, let me quickly pass my information because we have less time. Maybe the next instructor will come, continue from there. Okay, so on Monday, in the morning, we are going to be starting with Node.js. Very important. In the morning, we are starting with Node.js. And in the evening, we'll be writing Java. So Python is coming this evening. By 6 p.m., we'll be having Python by 6 p.m. But in the evening of Monday, we are going to be writing Java. Why Python will continue on Wednesday and Friday. And Node.js will take classes from Monday, uh, Wednesday, and uh, Friday. Then we end Node.js. Node.js is not that much. So it's just something uh, we can crash. And our instructor is ready to take us. OK? That will be, that will be in the morning. Yeah, always in the morning. So uh, web will continue on. Tuesday morning and probably Thursday morning we'll be ending it. So because we are almost done with the web, but uh, there's a project we need to do in the web, which is very important. We should not miss. I'm not sure if I'll be free tomorrow to take us for the web. So I don't want to put a class to week uh, on the weekend. So let's just uh, uh, deal with what we have for now. Okay, quickly. So like I've explained here, the condition statement, you have your if, and you put the condition in brackets, and you can either have your braces or not. When you have your braces, they call it a block if statement. If you don't have your braces, then it becomes just your if else statement, normal condition. Okay, so you can remove your braces. So that's what is represented there. Let's move to the next one. Uh, the next one now talks about. Changing the if statement, talking about yes, having if and else if, if and else if, if and else if. That means you can have multiple conditions if a is less than b, else if a, else if b, let's say for example, say else if a equals to b. You might want to do something else and have another else if, and have another else if. That's for this statement. And uh, the last one is the block statement, which I did initially. You have your if, your condition, and you put this uh, curly bracket, okay, in between each of your uh, blocks, just to show the beginning and the end of the condition, like you can see here. That's the one I did before. And to crown it all, because we have less than a minute. Uh, okay, this I will explain later. Logical approaches. Okay, I think we should stop here for now. Thank you very much for today. Uh, we'll continue uh, on Monday.